Hi guys, it's Teresa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to take a look at my reading stats for the year 2019. I know there's some people that don't enjoy stats at all, and then there's some that really love them, like they go crazy for stats. So I kind of wanted to take a step back basically from doing monthly stats. I think in 2020, I'm gonna try to do them still, but do kind of a little bit less. And then essentially at the end of the week, of the year or maybe of the quarter you can let me know what you prefer i'll do a full stat video for everything that you could possibly have a stat about so i think it kind of like balances it out and kind of satisfies both camps at least i think so so let me know what you think of this idea basically the second thing i want to do in today's video is take a look at my tbr for 2019 and see how well i did i always do a yearly tbr that's basically trying to get all the books of my tbr shelf that have been there for way too long first though let's get to the stats so according to goodreads i read 89 books in the year 2019 that is below my reading goal but it's still not bad i think so first i think we should take a look at the ratings that i gave out i gave seven bucks this year one star i have 15 two stars 24 three stars 28 four stars and 13 five stars actually i was really surprised by this because i thought my most frequent rating was a three star but apparently it's a four star so i'm a lot less negative than i thought i would be shocker that brings us to an average rating of 3.3 stars i also dnf'd 10 books this year and some of them i rated some of them i didn't that's why these stats sometimes don't quite make up like 89 just in case you're curious. The most surprising stat to me this year was genres. So I usually think I read a lot of fantasy. I read a lot of sci-fi. I read a lot of thrillers. Um, think again. <laughs> I did read mostly fantasy this year. I read 29 fantasy books, but my second highest genre was fiction with 10. And it is on the same level as romance, which I also read 10 books off this year. That is crazy to me. I don't read that much romance. I thought at least I didn't read that much romance. Apparently I read more than I thought I did. So that's interesting. I also have nine contemporaries in, next, in the next place. Then we have eight mysteries. And this is really funny because from this point forward, it just goes straight down the line. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. <laughs> so we've got eight mysteries, seven thrillers, six sci-fi, five historical fiction, four non-fiction, and then one singular horror book. I'm still quite pleased with this because I do try and like usually succeed at reading quite varied genres, but it's definitely very surprising to me still that I read so much romance. My settings, unfortunately, aren't as varied as I would have liked. I mean, they're varied, but I don't read that many books in other countries. My main setting was the US with 34 books and then the UK with 18 books so very generic and then also have 18 fantasy settings and then after that there's a huge jump and i have two books set each in australia a general world setting canada japan and space and then a bunch of one singular book set in the setting <laughs> and those are greece russia bolivia singapore sweden nigeria china and ireland and i am quite pleased to have read so many books from like different countries but i would have liked to have read more basically so that's what i'm going to try to do moving forward read more books set in other countries in terms of authors i read books by 45 authors that i'd never read a book by before and then 44 old authors old to me authors kind of so i think that's a good balance so like half the books i read are the authors i already know their style and their writing and the rest are completely new so i kind of like that as for genders we have 24 male authors and 65 female authors 65 of the books were also pretty hyped and 24 a little bit more obscure again this is a ratio i'd like to bring up in favor of the obscure books just a little bit but sometimes you just fall on the hype train <laughs> and obviously i want to know what the fuss is all about in a lot of cases i'm very very pleased with my age ranges this year 58 of the books i read were adult 30 were young adult and then one was a new adult book and then in total i read 35 1349 pages this year 
That seems insane. Like that's a crazy amount. I don't know how I did that. And that makes for an average length read of 96.8 pages a day and an average length per book of 397 pages. Hi friends, so I realized that I'm an idiot and I forgot to discuss the release year stat even though my boyfriend made me a wonderful graph for it so I felt like an idiot and I'm gonna insert this clip of editing me basically correcting that mistake. So for release years I had 18 books released in 2019, 59 books released between 2010 and 2018, 3 books released between 2000 and 2009. There's a bunch of books from the 20th century, I have like 9 books from that. So we've got um, 1 from the 40s, 4 from the 50s, 2 from the 60s, 1 from the 70s and 1 from the 90s and that's my reading your stat sorry for a little interruption now back to your regularly scheduled program the shortest book i read this year was binti by neti okorofora and the longest was a storm of swords by george r r merton and that concludes the stat portion of this video now let's take a look at my tbr for the year as always i had picked 12 books that i specifically wanted to read and i have the list in front of me so i'm just gonna go through them one by one the first book on the list is storm of swords by george r, r. martin and oh yes i read this this monster of a book i gave this one five stars i really really enjoyed it I gl i'm glad i finally read it i think this is so far probably my favorite one in the series i have yet to continue and the fourth one isn't spoiler alert, on my 2020 TBR, which uh, should already be up, so I will link it if you haven't seen it yet. But I enjoyed this one, but it's a struggle to like motivate me to continue reading. I hope to do that very soon, though. The next book on the list is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in the Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine and Valenti. And I could kick myself in the butt because I forgot that I DNF'd this book this year and I forgot to put it in my video. Oh my god, I have a whole video of books I DNF'd, so I'm an idiot because I DNF'd this one. I have tried to read this 50 times, I feel like. It's a middle grade book and it's just so weird and I don't understand it. Like, there's no point to it. It's just like weirdness for weirdness sakes and that's not my thing at all. Like, I need a point. I need something that you're trying to get across. I need like something to focus on. I didn't care. It's so short, but I, I just couldn't do it. I didn't want to ever read this. I tried reading it, I think during the Booktubeathon and I just like freaking failed. So I am just, I'm counting it as read <laughs> theoretically because I'm doing nothing. I'm never going to read this one. Mm -mm. The next book on my list is Black Like Me by John Howard Griffin and I actually ended up reading this one. I read this I think in February, so my memory isn't super clear on this one anymore, but I think I really enjoyed this. It's a non-fiction book about the author's experiences in the 1950s, I think. Yeah, when he went to Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama and Georgia, kind of wearing blackface. <laughs> like dress up as a black man because he wanted to experience what life was like in the south as an oppressed black man. I thought it was really interesting. It's definitely kind of dated obviously because this isn't something that you could get away with doing at all in the 2010s or even 2020s. Like, no, don't do this. Don't try this at home. But I thought it was a really interesting experiment, especially at the time. And I liked his way of recounting his experiences. So. I like this one. Definitely glad I finally read it. Next, I have Snow White and the Seven Samurai. I didn't get to this one. I just like, I think at some point I'm just gonna have to unhaul this. I think a friend of mine gave this to me like 10 years ago and when I started studying Japanese, so that's why she was like, oh, this is kind of funny. It has to do with Japanese. And it's like a satire book, I think. And I just didn't ever want to pick it up. I don't want to unhaul it quite yet, but I'm also not at all ever reaching for this one so we'll see what happens i'm not ready to part with it quite yet but it's just mm -mm, i'm not feeling it at the moment the next book on my list was the wonderful entwined by Hedda dixon i am so pleased like this honestly represents the reason of this video's existence like of this type of challenges existence because if it were not for project tbr i don't think i would have ever picked this up because i just didn't feel any sort of attraction to it there's a 12 dancing princesses retelling 
that's a very beautiful family story. I've talked about this book to no end. You can go watch all of my, like my best books of the year, my most surprising books of the year. This one makes all of those lists because it's so phenomenal. I love everything about this. I read it in like a day, didn't want to put it down. I am, I'm just so pleased to have finally read this one. It was definitely a hit for me and I'm very glad that this challenge made me read it. Next, I wanted to read a book on Japanese short stories. Do I actually have that behind me? Yeah, right here. Oh well. If you didn't know, this is my TBR shelf, so I guess that lets you know that, nope, I did not read this book. Still not read this book. I think I bought this literally, I don't know, like a few months into studying Japanese and like very ambitious person that I was. And I still just, oh, I should read it. I know I should. It would be such good practice and I have it. It's just short stories. So, you know, I should just sit down for a few hours, read one short story, work through it, like all the vocabulary, all that stuff. I should be able to do it, but I'm just too lazy. <laughs> um, this is a parallel text, if you didn't know. So you have like the Japanese original short story on one side and then an English translation on the other. And I think it's a nice way to learn because it kind of lets you not have to consult a dictionary all the time, but then also it lets you get a little bit lazy and like check way too often instead of just using your brain and thinking a little bit. So. Yeah, it has its ups and its downs, its pros and its cons, but I just still haven't read it. So, oops, that that was a fail on my part. Next on my list was The Martian by Andy Weir. And yes, I did read this book. And in my opinion, personal, very biased opinion, this is one of the most overhyped books ever to have existed. Like everybody loves this and I just don't relate. Like, I don't understand why I think it's, poorly written i guess like not in a sense of like the on a sentence level but just like the characters aren't interesting or at all likable or like you want to you know root for them i don't like andy weirs like focus on the science overly much and he just isn't a good writer in my opinion and i just don't like the book i'm sorry i'm sorry i have read it now but uh don't get it. I don't get the hype. The next one on my list is The Brides of Roll Rock Island by Margot Lanigan, which I have also read. This was like the second book I read this year. That was crazy. Like I was like, oh, so on top of my project TBR at the beginning and I knocked this out immediately pretty much. This book is set on like an island where the people can like, or like there's a witch that can call forth selkies from like basically mermaids but like seals right like it's a seal mermaid i think those are kind of the same thing in mythology maybe i'm confusing things but selkies she can call selkies from the sea and they transform into beautiful women and marry some of the villagers and then stuff happens it was very strange and not poorly written but also just like kind of reads more like short stories than a full novel because the, pers the perspective jumps so much and I didn't enjoy it, I think, but it's definitely not that great. <laughs> like, I don't think I'd recommend this to anyone, really. It's just like something I read and then forgot about. Next on my list was Detective Conan Volume 89 by Gosho Ayama, which I did read and I also read Volume 90 this year. I have said multiple times how I'm trying to pick up the pace a bit on reading the Conans because I'm so freaking slow. Like, I bought... I don't know, six Japanese mangas of this kind, uh, like three years ago, and I'm still not through with them. I still have like a bunch left to read. So like three more to read that I'm just so slow, so slow on this, but I did do it. I did do it. Yay me. Next, I wanted to read The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy, Hardy or Harding. Oops, I don't know. Didn't read it. Mm, nope. I am so bad at reading classics. Like, I never want to do it. I'm so envious and so in awe of Murphy for reading so many classics every single month. Like, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> it's like work to me and I just don't care. So unfortunately, I didn't read this. And it comes as no surprise that I also didn't read Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, which was also on this list. And actually, I really like Jane Austen. I love her writing. I think her classics are extremely accessible. 
but I just never wanted to pick this up, so I didn't. Oops. And then my final book on the list is Winter by Marissa Maya, which I did read. Uh, I enjoyed this more than I thought I did, but also it's a very forgettable story. It's a quick read considering it's like 800 pages. <laughs> and I did finish it, clearly, but I don't think it's like great. Like, I think this series is also pretty overhyped. It came out at the right time for people to lose their shit over it. But yeah, in retrospect, it's not that special. Like, the premise is cool with the androids and sci fi elements, cyborgs, sorry, not androids, but the cyborgs and the sci fi stuff. It's kind of cool. And like, taking the fairy tale stuff, it's kind of cool. But at its core, it's just a very generic story and a very generic book. And if it didn't have the hook that it does with the fairy tales, I don't think it would have been as successful as it was. So I'm glad I finished the series, but yeah. Again, kind of forgettable. And that's it for my TBR recap, as well as stats for the year 2019. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I leave some other videos I did recently on the screen right now, so you can go ahead and watch more of this face if you care to do so. I hope to see you back very soon with another video. Until then, have a lovely week. Bye!